In this second video of the Wellplate Navigator series, I'll show you how to acquire multi-channel ZStack images from multiple wells. If you haven't already, make sure you watch the first video in this series, where I discuss the necessary preparation steps. Let's get started. First, make sure the Well Navigation Layout tab is open. Click Load Overview Area to open the well plate data that you registered. If you haven't registered your plate, please refer to the first video in this series. Select the objective lens you're using for the acquisition. Then click Open a dialog box to define the current pattern. In this dialog box, you can define the XY acquisition coordinate pattern in each well. A variety of patterns are available. In this example, select Full Well In and then click OK. Click a well to assign the pattern to it. The whole area inside the well is registered as an acquisition area. If you want to delete the pattern, click the Delete button and then click on the well. The pattern will disappear. For more information about other patterns, use our online help tool. Here, we'll use Custom Rectangle. In this mode, you can place any number of rectangle-shaped frames in each well. In this example, the number of rows and columns are set to 3. You can also define the space between each frame. If you click Tile, there will be no space, and if you click Spread, the space will be set to Maximum. Click Spread and then OK. To copy this pattern to multiple wells, left-click your mouse and move it across each well. The pattern is clearly visible in the preview window. Three columns, three rows, with spread spacing. Click the position list to check the registered positions. The XY position, well ID, and well position ID are registered at each point. We'll define the Z position later. Click OK to close the position list. Now we'll enter the acquisition settings. Open the Process Manager tool window. Click the Multi-Channel, Z-Stack, and XY Positions MIA icons to enable them. Time-lapse is also available, but we'll skip it here to save time. Assign DAPI and RFP channels. Click on the DAPI channel. The microscope icon indicates that your system is ready to acquire DAPI. Start live and adjust the focus and exposure time. Click Read Setting to register the current exposure time. Repeat this for the RFP channel. Then click Read Settings. Stop live and then we'll adjust the ZStack settings. Select Range to acquire a Z-Stack centered on the current Z position. The optimal step size can be calculated using the theoretical optical Z resolution. Click to apply the recommended step size. Lock the step size and then decide the number of Z-slices. Let's set it to 5. Checking Z before channel can shorten the acquisition time by reducing the number of filter turret rotations. Now that the Z-Stack range is registered, let's register the center of the Z-Stack. You should choose the best focus position, which differs depending on the XY position. Because it's difficult to register the focus for all positions, we recommend using a True Focus Z-Drift Compensator. The TrueFocus hardware-based autofocus system keeps the sample in sharp focus faster and with less damage to your cells than software-based autofocus. It detects the vessel bottom by emitting an infrared laser and detecting its reflection. It moves the objective lens to compensate for any Z-drift, keeping your sample in focus. We can register the same Z-drift offset at several positions, since we expect the cells to be captured at almost the same distance from the vessel bottom. Registering the Z-Drift Compensation Offset is simple. Open the Position List 
and select the positions that have the same offset value. In this example, we'll select them all. Click Read Offset. Live starts automatically so that you can find the focus position. Once you've done that, check Apply to All and then click OK. Make sure that the Z-Drift Compensation Offset was registered. In this example, we registered the same offset for all positions to save time. You can also register different offsets for different wells for more accurate focus. Click the AF icon and check Z-Drift Compensation to activate true focus during the experiment. Before starting the experiment, let's check the save location and name. Click Acquisition Settings. Then click Process Experiment under Document Name in the Tree View. Click All Options and you'll be able to add and remove properties. Select Experiment Name, Process Type, Date, Counter, Well Position ID, and Separator. And you can change the order by clicking the Up and Down buttons. Check the text in the preview to confirm that it's correct and then click OK. Check Reset Automatically so that the counter sets to 1 automatically. Then click Process Experiment under Saving in the tree view. Select File System as the save destination. Check Create Subdirectory and click Customize to see the subdirectory's name. Click Folder and Modify. Give the file any name you want, then click OK. Check Close After Save since the navigator acquires a lot of images. Click OK to close the acquisition settings. We're ready to start the acquisition. Click Start. Two channel ZStack images are acquired at each point. The number of frames and time remaining are displayed on the lower left of your screen. The focus is good thanks to the True Focus Z Drift Compensator. The acquired images are not opened, but instead are saved per our acquisition settings. OK, the experiment is done. Let's check the save location. Make sure the folder is available according to the acquisition settings. 90 images are available. You can quickly overview the images. Make sure the file name shows experiment name, process type, date, and well position ID as we specified in the acquisition settings. We can drag and drop images to them for more detailed observation. Overview images are available in the gallery tool window, making it easy to browse images. Thanks for watching! In the next video, I'll explain how to group wells and set individual acquisition settings. For more information, visit olympus-lifescience.com.